all the uh, medical devices, we go through a series of intensive animal study. And one of the earlier animal study is on the uh, influence of the stem cells and the adult cells on a rabbit model, and we use the Calvera rabbit model to do it. <coughs> we were extremely happy that at that time to realize the fact that the integration of the tissue with the scarfo is exceptional, as can be seen by not only the uh, histological sections, but also by the micro CT. And we were then very happy with this, and then we also went on to do the mechanical testing. In fact, as can be seen in one of these slides in here, we have shown the fact that the composite between the scaffold and the uh, um, uh, bone material is stronger than a bone, it's more durable, more fracture resistant. We then went on into a larger animal model, and this is really something which we are very, very proud of in the sense that we performed the micro CT, and in the micro CT, we wanted to address one critical issue. What is the issue? Does your bone grow only on the surface of the scaffold or into the scaffold? And if I can freeze this picture, we have got sufficient evidence right now to demonstrate that the microarchitecture allows the bone to be formed not only on the surface, but also internally. So with that success, we went on into development with uh, the clinicians, in this case, plastic surgeons, plus also the neurosurgeons into a, a mesh. And we did perform, in this case here, um, pardon, some of the terms I use may not be too clinical. I hope you forgive me. Um, this is a patient that fell down from a construction site. One third of his skull was gone. So we had a ethics committee approval to work on about 10 uh, ANSYS trauma patient. In this particular case, we customized the scaffold, but because it is a large scaffold, we need cells. At that time, we were working not yet on this adult stem cell. We basically seed 3 million cells onto the patient. We did not want to send any of the information until three years has passed because we were very concerned. What would happen? to the defect when it has been completely degraded. After three years, of course, we expected uh, more bone to form, but we realized the fact that the cosmetic part was really excellent, and within one month, we could see hair grew back, and the uh, patients, although we hope to have more uh, mineralization, they have pockets of mineralization, and the reason that we did not have stem cells, we did not have growth factors, the number of cells was only 3 million. We perhaps could have 300 million cells. And that was a, a, an example of the fact that the, the trial and error experiment we had to undergo. Then it came from a neurosurgeon. We were very delighted. The neurosurgeon said, well, you know, one of the problems with the Burho procedure is that can we speed up the process of surgery? Well, we said, well, in your surgery, if you need to close up the burr hole, we're comparing that with titanium. With titanium plate with three screws would typically take about maybe 25 minutes to 30 minutes. But with the scaffolds, I just want you to take note of the fact that it is shaped like a butter mushroom with a flange, and all we do is to pop it in. And automatically, because of the way that it's been designed, it will then remain red in color, showing the fact it's sucking in all the cells, all the red blood hematoma, and so on. What was really surprising was this. We did not expect bone growth until about maybe nine months. But in three months, bone grew. <coughs> and this was to our surprise. Whether it is an old patient or young patient, it was the same. And we quickly published it in uh, neurosurgery in 2006. And we attributed to the fact that, hey, the defect is small enough. The conduction path around the scaffolds is sufficient to cause the bone to populate. And in fact, it has been a wonderful experience. So we have now gone to the stage we tell a number of uh, surgery in the surgery why leave a hole when it can be filled immediately and cost effectively. 
it was a plastic surgeon that said, can you help some of the um, young people that has crinocyanosis? I was delighted. I said, could I go in and see how the surgery was done? So after we had gone in a few surgeries, we realized that we could actually do it for young patients. In this case, we have to move the skull by up to two centimeters. How did they do it? Basically, break up the skulls into five parts and then use a mesh and cover it up like a paper mesh. And then we allow the flap to be put back. And we have six patients in this case. And cosmetically, it was really good. And we wanted to share in this conference our long-term results. And this slide was just given to me on my way to the airport yesterday. This is a four-year trial. And I've just been very delighted to let you know complete resorption, no more synthetic material, bone formation. I hope I have not bored you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tio.